Hey, what's going on? It's Cooper Anderson from Creating the Sound, and we're back again with another snare drum of the day. Today is the Ludwig 9x13 Cub Model Marching Snare, as heard on the bands up on Cripple Creek. So let's check it out. All right, so the first thing that I noticed on the reference was that it had that kind of very, like, analog warmth type sound, uh, very tapey. Um, so it had a bunch of presence, but it wasn't like sizzling with the high end. So let's take a listen to the drums we have just raw and see what we've got. So yeah, we're going to have to find, uh, a nice like darkening or tape sound to really bring down the brightness of that snare a bit without losing the presence. So let's take a listen to the soloed snare group. You can probably right off the bat just go with more snare bottom. I mean less snare bottom. There's just the snare top. There's snare bottom, let's just bring that way down. Yeah, already that's way more in the pocket of where I think we need to be. And also I wanted to make the attack, not the attack, the release slash decay a little bit lower. So it's a little punchier and it doesn't have that ring. It looks like on the notes Dylan did some muffling. The shop rag held on with two binder clips, but we're going to muffle it even more on the mix. getting some bleed from the other mics. Let's just focus on the snare group. Okay, I think that's more of the vibe. Let's get the drum gate on here. I'm gonna open my mix window. Um, we can take these IO plugins off. That was from Dylan's session, we don't need that. So I'm gonna put the drum gate before the uh, smack attack. Take off this EQ and see what that sounds like. Oh, wow. I like that a lot better without that EQ. That was just on there. So let's, let's rebalance this. I think we can put some of the snare bottom back in. And let's put a smack attack on the group and get a little more attack. And then we'll load my new favorite plugin, Claro. Try to get some more of that punch, the presence I was saying without the overall brightness and maybe a little bass, a little more bass. Let's bring up this frequency that's already ringing here. We can see it right there. And we'll cut this, uh, the rumble. that in the track. All right, let's figure out where the rest of this sound is coming because they still have a lot of the, uh, the decay of the snare. All right, so it's coming from the room mic, it sounds like, and that's being compressed. So before that gets compressed, Let's take some of the sustain off it. Have to be gentle because it's it's uh very grabby. All 
Um, let's try a different compressor. Let's try the IK Distressor Compressor. Slower attack, faster release. Uh, let's try the distortion circuits. The disc two is all right. I like this knob here, this little drive knob that's unique to this plugin. Hear that in the in the mix. Still sounds like overall there's kind of like too much brightness. Maybe there's maybe it's in the overheads. is nice because it has the auto gain so it brings up your frequencies without overall bringing up the volume. It's nice to really hear what you're doing that way. Okay, we can clean this up. I don't even have that plug in. And he's got a compressor on the drum bus. Not sure if we're gonna need that. We might actually have to turn the snare down a little bit, the snare group. And let's try the baby audio tape. Tape. Sliders. flanging. I feel like that's still a little too dark now. I'm going to throw some Claro after this just to bring up a little more presence. down as a shelf and bring this up on the mid frequency. kick real quick. Make sure it's nice and analog punchy. Go to gate. He's only got one mic that's playing. I 
want to throw this mic on there too. The other one's a little too uh, flappy. Give this one to give it a little more punch. And I'm going to try and take down some of the high end before we get into the uh, gate. All right, let's hear how those blend. Yeah, it's a little punch here. Okay, cool. That's probably a little more thicker than the original. Because uh, the original is uh, definitely a vintage recording. I'm not even sure what year it was released, but it was tape all the way, analog, no digital. Um, so some of those recordings came out a little more thinner. And in modern production, we tend to have a little more uh, bass and treble on the drums. So I'm okay with that. And let's throw ozone on and give it a quick master before we call it a day on this snare of the day. Here we go. So we're just going to loop it and let it play through the ozone AI. No reverb. I'm keeping it super dry. Keeping the ozone setting to the modern because the um, when you do the vintage setting, it tends to just not sound that good. So the modern's a little more clear. Cool. So that was the snare of the day. I thought we got pretty close, just matching the analog, analog Nias tape sound of it. Um, it has a nice punch to it, and uh, yeah, it's, I think it would be good in some lo-fi type productions. So anyway, thanks again for watching. This is Cooper Anderson. We'll see you next time on Creating the Sound, and I'm going to play the track so you can hear what it ended up like.